Hello and welcome everybody back to the channel. I am your host Vortex from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And we really hope you enjoyed our last video where we demonstrated our top five picks of plugins for creating that lo-fi sound. We actually demoed those five plugins on three separate tracks, including the drums, piano, and guitar. So it actually ended up being our longest video yet. So if you're into creating lo-fi music or just curious on how these plugins sound, make sure to check out that video and let us know in the comments which plugins you guys use to create that lo-fi sound. And please also let us know if you guys prefer these longer form videos with more demonstrations as opposed to the shorter videos that we've created in the past. All right, on to business. In today's video, we'll be talking about one of the pillars to mobile music production, and that is Ableton Link. We'll be diving into what it is, demonstrating how to use it, and why it's such an important tool for you to be aware of. Now, this app is extremely versatile and enables a near infinite amount of workflows. So please comment below and let us know how you are using Ableton Link in your production workflow. And just real quick, if you're listening to this show right now on iTunes or Spotify, uh, we would really appreciate it if you guys could give us a review. I don't believe we have any reviews on there yet at all. So please, if you are listening to the audio version, which we do provide on both Spotify and iTunes, please give us a review over there and let us know how we're doing. So with that intro aside, let's dive into how to synchronize your apps on iPhone and iPad with Ableton Link. Okay, folks, before we get started with any demos or anything like that, we're going to go ahead and explain Ableton Link to you. So we have the website pulled up here. So Ableton Link is a technology that keeps devices in time over a local network. So you can forget about the hassle of setting up and just focus on playing music. Link actually expands outside the iOS ecosystem and onto your desktop computer and other devices. But in this video, we're only going to be speaking about using Link on mobile devices like the iPhone and iPad within that iOS ecosystem. To enable Link with any given app, you simply go to the settings menu and toggle the Ableton Link button. And we're going to show you how to do this within all the apps that we use today. You can actually connect a very large number of apps together at the same time, but since we're running on a first gen iPad Pro and we're actually trying to keep this video short, we'll only be linking between a few apps together today. But also stick around and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because in a future video we'll actually be showing you how to route all of this audio from all of these apps or from host apps like Audiobus and AUM into your favorite DAW, while today we're just going to be actually connecting them together. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of apps pulled up here and we actually created a song using these apps. So we're going to go through these one by one. As you can see, first we have the launch pad for the drums. We're going to be using Groovebox for the bass line, iMachine 2 for the piano pad, Gadget 2 for the arpeggio, and Synth Player for the lead. We currently have all of these apps connected together right now via Ableton Link. And we're going to show you those apps one by one. So let's go ahead and start with Launchpad first. To enable Ableton Link within Launchpad, we're going to click the bar menu in the top left hand corner, and then we're going to click on Settings. Then you'll see the Ableton Link option right here. We have it currently enabled, but we can click on this and we can enable and disable this whenever we'd like. Ableton Link will then set your BPM for you, which you can check by clicking the BPM. Ableton Link will then set your BPM for you, which you can check by clicking the BPM option in the top right hand corner. Here we can see that it is displaying the 140 BPM that our Ableton Link is set to across all of our apps. Next up we have Groovebox, and here we just have the bass enabled because we are just going to be using it for a bass line, which you can see here. To enable Ableton Link within Groovebox, we click the gear icon in the top left hand corner, which will bring up our settings menu. From there, we can see an Ableton Link option, and again, ours is currently enabled. If we click on this, we can then enable and disable this. Next up, we have iMachine 2, and this will be playing our piano and pad sound. To enable Ableton Link within iMachine 2, we tap on the BPM at the top. This will bring up the Ableton Link menu. As you currently can see, it is enabled, and we can disable that by clicking on the Ableton Link menu. Here we can see that it is enabled and we can enable and disable this at any time and see how many apps are currently connected to Ableton Link. As you can see, we currently have four other apps connected to this app via Ableton Link. Next up, we have Korg Gadget 2. This will be playing our arpeggio. 
To enable Ableton Link within Core Gadget, we click on the gear icon in the top right hand corner. This will bring up our Ableton Link menu and as you can see it is currently enabled and we can enable and disable this by tapping this button here. And finally we have Synth Master Player which will be playing our lead sound. To enable Ableton Link within Synth Master, we click on the menu option on the right hand side, click on the engine settings on the left hand side, and we can see that Link is currently enabled. To view the Ableton Link settings, including the ability to disable it, we just click on the Link icon. And as before, this will bring up the Ableton Link menu where we can disable Ableton Link and see how many other apps are connected to this app via Ableton Link. Okay, now let's go ahead and enable the sound in these apps one by one. And as you'll be able to see, they'll all be synced perfectly with Ableton Link. So first, let's turn on the drums by going to Launchpad. Turn on the bass line. So we've already showed you how you can connect all of the apps via Ableton Link without them being in some kind of host application, like AUM, Audiobus, or a DAW. But here we also wanted to show you that you can still use Ableton Link even when these apps are hosted within a host application like AUM or Audiobus. AUM is another audio mixer that allows you to connect, route, mix, and record audio from music apps and is another pillar of mobile music production as it's one of the main hosts used to mix audio. Now this app was created by Kymatica AB and is being sold for $18.99. So as you can see, we have all of the apps that we just demonstrated to make a song with hosted here within AUM. 
including Launchpad, Groovebox, iMachine 2, Core Gadget 2, and Synth Player. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, this entire application is synced with Ableton Link, currently set to 140 BPM. To set up AUM with Ableton Link, we click on the Link option at the top left hand corner, and then click the three dots to enter the settings menu. And here you can see that Ableton Link is enabled. Once we click on the Ableton Link menu, this will bring up our familiar Ableton Link menu where we can enable and disable it, as well as see how many applications are currently connected to Ableton Link. And just a quick reminder, we're actually going to do a video soon showing you guys how to route all of this audio into your favorite DAW like Cubasis. Next up, we also wanted to show you all of these apps connected within another host like AUM only with AudioBus. AudioBus is another mixer app that allows you to connect and route AudioBus compatible apps together. And together, AudioBus and AUM are the two main hosts to connect audio apps together outside of the more traditional DAWs on the iPad such as Cubasis or Nano Studio. AudioBus was created by Michael Tyson who also created popular apps such as Loopy. And AudioBus is currently going for $9.99 in the App Store. Now both AudioBus and AUM are absolutely worth every single penny as they are fabulous hosts for all of these music apps. And if you're asking, why would you want to use one of these host apps when you can just use them by themselves separately as we demonstrated in the beginning? And really the main reason for that is so that you can have these layouts, these saved layouts. Both AUM and AudioBus allow you to save your sessions. So if you have a specific set of apps that you want to pull up each and every time, you can do that both with AUM and AudioBus by saving each one of your sessions. And again, in a future video, we are going to go more in depth on how to route your audio around inside of DAWs and how to record it as well. So as you can see here, we have our same apps pulled up, Launchpad, Groovebox, iMachine 2, Core Gadget 2, and Synth Player. But you'll notice something in the bottom right hand corner of all of these icons and that is a little link icon. As you can see it says link in the bottom right hand corner on each and every one of these icons. And that is AudioBus letting you know that this app is Ableton Link compatible. So if we go to add a new app you can see that all of these list of apps has a little link icon next to it. This will let you know immediately if this app is Ableton Link compatible or not. And just like AUM AudioBus does have a mixer so you can adjust all the volumes of the individual apps here by clicking on the mixer button at the bottom of the page. To go back to your apps you simply click audio. Alright welcome back everybody we really hope that this video helped you in some way. We know we use Ableton Link all the time both for jamming and actual production purposes. And as we stated in the intro, this video was just a demonstration of the iOS ecosystem using apps on the iPhone and iPad. But Ableton Link actually extends well beyond this and into your desktop, into your Windows and Mac OS environments. So certainly make sure to check this out. If you use a lot of desktop music production software, you can really easily hook up the iPad to be able to use it as another sound device and expand your arsenal of sound even further. And of course, as always, we have many, many more videos to come. So if you enjoy content like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up. It both helps our channel and gets more people into mobile music production. So until next time, folks, keep talking music and we'll see you later.